Welcome back to Press On Mobile Copy. Today we are framing out our cabinets. So to frame out these cabinets, I'm using two by two lumber, uh, which is actually an inch and a half by inch and a half. Um, and what I did, of course, I had my floor plan to go off of for the kind of general layout. And then I just sat down and figured out what it's going to take to, um, for all my cuts, um, for, you know, countertop height generally is about 36 inches after the countertops are on. So you have to take into consideration, um, the actual thickness of your countertop, um, as well as, um, the height of each one of your, basically your supports here and make sure that your finished product is actually at 36 for the height. So what I did for my lumber and my cuts, um, I went around the whole trailer, sat down with pen and paper and figured out, okay, what's it going to take for my supports, the ones holding up the cabinets. Um, there's going to be some uh, cross members that go across here. Uh, that's the top supporting the countertop itself. But I did all my measurements, added that all up, divided that by 12, you know, to get how many feet. Uh, or how many inches rather, and then divided that by eight feet because these come in eight foot sticks uh, to get how much I'd actually need. And then I went through, figured up, so here we're gonna have this front counter, side counter here. There won't be a counter right here, and then there'll be my serving window counter here. But uh, what I did is I figured up, okay, I measured on paper, what cuts I'm gonna need. And I went ahead and cut all these ahead of time. Uh, just saves a lot of time just to knock it out all at once and then you can just start assembling it. As you can see, this part being the heavy curve of the trailer, it's pretty tricky. So of course I didn't wanna to try to bend these boards. What I did is I just cut a slight angle here and here. So this could lay flush. And yeah, I had to do that with each one of these. Of course, that's just for the front of the trailer. When it comes to securing these two by twos, uh, what I'm doing is drilling a pilot hole first, just not taking a chance of the lumber splitting. Um, so I'm putting a single screw in the top of each one of these supports on each one, just one screw because it's not a very big area. Um, but I already did that on the bottom here from the bottom up. And then I'll actually secure this bottom plate to the floor. And then some of these here will be supported to the back as well. Um, but my cross members here for these supports, I'm not going to put them directly in line with these bottom leg supports. I'll hit the screw from the top there. So I'll offset these a little bit on the front and the back. I just remembered an important tip I wanted to share with you about these cross supports. Uh, be mindful where you're putting them uh, and be mindful of where your equipment's going to be on your counter. Uh, not just for weight purposes, but if you're going to install a cutout for your knock box um, or putting in like a pitcher rinse sink, um, which I definitely recommend, just be mindful where the supports are. You don't want to cut through one. So I'm doing a traditional depth of 24 inches like you'd find in any kitchen. Um, what's a little bit challenging about the curve of the trailer here is 24 inches from here, where this curves out, this is the, the deepest part, comes out to about here on my window which is great, except down below, it gives me, once I'm done framing, about 10 and a half inches in between there of ca cabinet space below. Uh, luckily, this is gonna be below my espresso machine, so I don't need a whole lot of room, but I will have my water tank here, so be mindful if you are gonna do one of these trailers, um, your measurements, because it's gonna be tough to fit things down here. I can barely fit a water tank down here. Um, I'll have my water pump under here as well, uh, my water filter system, uh, my electrical panel will be over here in the corner. And then going this way, I'll have some other storage and stuff, fridge here and so forth. But uh, I'll show you that when I get there. If you want to build these cabinets the way I am doing it, uh, what I recommend for measurements, um, you have, you're going to do the 36 inch tall countertops from floor to top. You'll have generally what I'm using is a butcher block that's an inch thick. So I have one inch on my top for my counters. And then I have each one of these top plates 
and bottom plates are an inch and a half thick. So that's three inches plus the one inch from the countertop. That's four total inches and we need 36 for our height. So what you're going to want to do then, of course, is take 36 minus four, you get 32 inches. So each one of your supports here is generally going to be 32 inches. However, if you're doing a trailer like this one that has this curve like this, each one of these supports is going to be slightly longer. It just depends on your trailer. These here are actually, I think they were about 35 and an eighth, somewhere around there. I'm just going to vary a little bit depending on the trailer, um, you know, how it's curved. All right, that's enough talking for now. I better get to work, see how much I can get uh, accomplished here this evening. And uh, I'll be back shortly to show you the end result. Okay, so I finished most of the framing for my cabinets. This is the front counter here. This is where my fridge is going to go. Um, right here, I'll have a shelf underneath here above that wheel well. I'm gonna build around that. But this is the part where my sink is gonna be. So what I did is my hand sink is gonna be here. It's only about seven inches wide. Uh, and then I left a, a bit of a gap between my hand sink and the three compartment sink just for sanitary purposes. So three compartment sink will be here and then just extra counter space back here for dishes to dry and whatnot. Um, maybe a trash bin underneath. I've never had an ice bin in the past, but I think I might put an ice bin in right here in this section right here. I still have this counter to build right here. Won't take that long. It's a pretty small counter, but I think I ran out of lumber actually. One thing that's really frustrating about these old trailers is they are never square, at least not in my experience. But when I put my countertop on top of there, it's hitting the wall right there and all the way back in that corner. The middle, it's not. So what that means is actually sticking out about a half inch. They have a little bit of a gap then back here. There's no way I can pull that wall end at all. Overhang doesn't bother me, but that's just these trailers are just not squared up. I'll have to put in a trim or actually in this countertop, they do make a like a little three or four inch backsplash. So I might do that. Uh, maybe do some tile work, uh, some faux tile to kind of cover that a little bit. I think that might look nice, especially since that's the, the back of the sink as well, so. Okay, so for my last cabinet that I'm gonna be building, again, I did run out of lumber for the most part, but it's for my service window. Um, and I'm gonna, only thing different with that cabinet that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the cabinet a little bit thinner. So maybe only come out 18 inches, I think is what I figured. Um, and then that's just enough to hold like my POS system, um, stuff like that for, you know, when you're talking to the customer. And then what I'll do with these um, countertops that I have here, they're 25 and a half inches uh, wide. 
So I'm gonna cut a portion out to fit outside my window. So the countertop is gonna be the height of the window and then it's gonna protrude out the window a little bit as my shelf. And these, uh, what's nice about these countertops is they are made for outside. They're really durable. The acacia, it's kind of like uh, teak wood too. So just got to oil it and every, every now and then kind of like butcher block. Um, same thing you got to do with butcher block. So yeah, but once I finish the other cabinet framing and get the countertops on, I'll do a final little photo and video and show you guys. Couple last things here. If you found any of this info helpful, give this video a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments. I'll be happy to answer those for you. And make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified of future videos so you don't miss out. And or subscribe and uh, stay in touch with us. But uh, my name is Anthony with Press On Mobile Copy and we'll see you next time.